Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Vash Dota coming at you with a first replay cast, or let's say it's a replay cast um, that is going to be the first since quite a while, so therefore this is for me some sort of new start. Um, I will be focusing more on replay cast in the future, uploading one to two every single week. I'm going to be focusing today on Mouseports vs Speed Gaming International. This is actually best of three series. I am in game number two right now and it's from the Champions League. And um, we will see how Mouseports are going to react because they just went off from losing the first game against Speed Gaming. And therefore they will have to win this game to get into the third game into the deciding game for the points. And um, obviously you do want to win those uh, few games you are playing because we are in a group stage right now. You want to qualify yourself to proceed into the next stage of the tournament. It's about $50,000 right here. And as I just said, Mouseports lost first game against Speed Gaming. Um, not necessarily a stomp, but Speed Gaming showed their dominance for sure. Um, yeah, so we will see if it's going to be a best of two or a best of three in that sort of sense. And if we're going to go into a game number three or not. Mouseports here... In the draft already banning out the Lich and the Tower and Chieftain or the Elder Titan, however you want to call him nowadays. Um, Lich, one of those heroes that has been first pick, first ban material for quite a while right now. He is just so strong. He gives yourself experience with the sacrifice. That makes him even a good tri laner as long as you pick up a plus stunner support and a good core hero. In general, um, very, very, very strong support having a huge impact on the game currently with a win percentage over 55% um, being picked up in almost every single game when he's not first banned. Anyhow, Tower and Chieftain or Elder Titan, I don't have to say a lot about him. He as well has a lot of dominance in the game. His natural or or order is just so strong that every single fight you need to care when you're in... Um, in the range of that Elder Titan, you cannot stand very well against him. You need to get some nice items, like for example, an Assault Curious up on your team. You need to get Vladimir's up. You need just you need to get your auras up to be able to stand against that strong aura. So definitely a valid ban there as well. Doombringer has made a strong reappearance as well in this new patch. This is 6.79 patch, by the way, guys. If you have missed out on what has happening in this patch, you better check out some. Um, patch analysis or some or just check out the patch in general um, really huge patch a lot of stuff has happened um, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be uh, touching on a lot of that stuff in this game as well anyway next being banned out as well so yeah um, nothing nothing to add here I'm not quite sure about the next band to be honest because I have not seen mouse sports play a lot of nakes so far I do know however what we're seeing right now that speed gaming already picked up two of Two of the core heroes basically, Visage and or Visage and Shadow Fiend are being picked up for speed gaming. Shadow Fiend most of the times are is being played in mid lane on Sing Sing. Um, Visage, yeah, one of those heroes that either AoE plays or Pilot Eye, depending if AoE gets a macro hero such as a Chen or not. Normally Visage is being played by AoE 2000 though. Um, really have actually heavily farming Visage as well. Um, not just kills but also Ancients, Creeps in general with his familiars and normally you see Aoi getting that Aghanim step drop in the first 25 minutes of a game. So yeah, strong heroes for them. Mouseports has picked up a Crystal Maiden and a Bristol bag actually, man, that is quite something here. Um, Crystal Maiden, yeah, one of those supports that has been rising as well. I think she's sitting around 50 50% uh, win, she's at a 50% win, uh, win percentage. Wait, that is, that is definitely, definitely... Um, yeah, that just came out wrong. Whatever. Anyways, so Crystal Maiden is one of those heroes that has been picked up a lot as well. And um, she's not necessarily losing here. She's not necessarily winning hero. Uh, I do think it depends on the lineup in general. Uh, definitely a valid support right here. So a nice slow, a nice strong AoE new coming out of Crystal Maiden. Um, Bristleback with his slow of the goo that is stacking as well. So um, that is quite... That is quite an interesting lane for sure, if they're going to lane together. I do believe Bristleback is going to be played um, the traditional way on a tri lane or on a safe lane. Um, just farming up, maybe even a solo lane, we will see. But uh, basically Bristleback farming up, getting tanky and just standing in the line. Dishing out his damage with... Um, well, mostly actually dishing out his damage with his Quill Spray. And that works well with his Bristleback um, passive. Because every single time you take damage and you have... Um, you, you get over the 250 um, damage cap from the rear you uh, burst out one of those nice little quills and they do damage and they stack as well every single uh, quill spray you do in addition um, 
does actually deal damage, bon uh, deal bonus damage basically. Um, so that's actually quite sy nice synergy because of the slow. You can hit a lot. You can spam out your cool spray. Definitely a nice DPS, but that has, he has not been picked up a lot in this meta in the last few months. Actually, actually, has not ever been picked up in Dota 2 so far, really. Um, so this is going to be very interesting. And Venomans are being picked up as well for mouse sports here. So if this is going to be a trial in for uh, mouse sports, it's going to be a very, very strong trial in because I mean, Venomans are slow. Crystal Maiden stun, or, or I guess pseudo stun with the Frostbite and the um, Ice Nova slow, as well as the Bristol Bagu. I mean, there's, there's just no way you, you're going to get out of it. If the Gale hits, you're basically dead for sure. Um, because everything else is going to follow up. If this stun opens, well, you're dead for sure as well. I don't know if anything can actually stand against that. Uh, it's going to be quite, quite, quite a hard lane to play against if it's going to be the hard lane of Speed Gaming International. They have, um, by the way, banned out the Old World Rara as well as the Clockwork Goblin. Um, we have seen that, uh, t uh, that uh, the, the Goblin Shredderer on the opposing uh, side has been taken off from Mouseports. So not too much so here. Um, we do see Juggernaut being banned out. And wow, Speed Gaming is picking up one of the heroes I have only um, seen a couple of times recently. And um, ever since the patch 6.79, Dazzle is being played as well. And to be quite honest with you, he's working out, especially when Speed Gaming are playing them. I have seen two games so far with the Dazzle. Um, Man, that is, that is, it's a hero that works really well with Shadow Fiend as well. I mean, you have that weave interaction with um, the, 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 oh god, I, I'm not even quite sure, the, the, the presence of the Dark Lord aura. So a lot of minus armor coming out. If that weave hits the opposing team for the five people, they can basically not fight the next, um, or the full duration of the ultimate of Dazzle. Because that weave is going to do so much damage with every single second decreasing your armor and therefore if you go in against a shadow fiend as well there's just no way you can fight because they're gonna hit hard and visage familiars as well as visage himself has a lot of dps shadow fiend you don't have to talk about him he has a lot of dps as well and um in addition to that obviously you still have some extra burst i mean coming out with the raises with the requiem of souls and with the soul assumption and then again with the requiem of souls you also have the 50 percent damage reduction if you go in and um it's even though the tooltip says 25 it has been actually updated to, to 50 percent in i believe it was the patch before this patch so if shadow fiend opens with the requiem of souls in the fight you deal 50 percent less damage and then in addition to that your armor um your armor disadvantage is just gonna make you have a horrible fight um, however we do see mouse bots reacting with a kunkka pick right here trying to maybe work in some ghost ship coconut of the rum um buff placer just to be able to fight more to be tankier although you're still gonna die and drop if that wears off and you take or you took too much damage overall um however i do like that venomancer is going to deal a lot of aoe damage and we have crystal maiden who's dealing aoe damage kunkka with the torrent a little bit of aoe damage there as well tidebringer splash we do have the ghost ship aoe really not that bad i have to say i mean this is just this, this is going to be very interesting right now um the one part that might Mouse be a problem is that Venomancer down. is going to fall off in levels really quick if he's going to pl be played as a support, which I heavily suspect right now. Um, although Mouse Boys has been running Kunkka as a support, to be honest, um, on crit with a Crystal Maiden roaming. So who knows, who knows, Kunkka with a... Uh, actually, that was quite an interesting game. I've seen Kunkka being played with uh, or by crit with a Crystal Maiden roaming around and he farmed up Arcane Boots into a dagger... Um, with some um, Urner Shadows stacked on him as well, so that was quite interesting. Dagger Kunkka was actually really powerful. They just their presence on the map was felt so strongly that they just completely demolished their opponents. Um, yeah, we will see what's going to come out of Mouse Sports in this game. Um, Cinderin is playing the solo mid in this lineup, so. Not quite sure actually. I don't see. I, I, I haven't seen his Kunkka so far in mid lane. I'm not quite sure if there's going to be a Kunkka in mid, to be honest. But then again, this is this is interesting laning wise. I could Mouse maybe make a durable dual dual lane bottom. Just have a lot of slow so you can get out, or maybe even a crystal maiden standing way back, hitting out the frostbite to prevent any go on her. Uh, however, we do have a, a weaver being picked up by Speed Gaming as well. Man, that's completely their lineup right now. They weaver is being played by them um, all the time, basically as well on Eternal Envy. Um, he likes to play a weaver. He likes to play aggressive. Just 
Tsukuchi into the fight or Tsukuchi into a, a tower chasing a support and then just time lapsing out right afterwards and Mouseboard's gonna finish up with a Nature's Prophet pick. Is this gonna be Nature's Prophet in mid lane? I am not quite sure. I, I do suspect it's gonna be Kunkka in mid lane. Nature's Prophet on the off lane and the tri lane with or around Bristol back Venomancer and Crystal Main by uh, Mouseboard's but then again I really am not quite sure. The meta has shuffled a lot around um, with lanings, with the uh, with the gameplay in general. Um, we do see Speed Gaming um, banning out Puck, and we have Batrider being banned out by Mouse Boys from before. Um, Batrider, one of those series that is falling off really rapidly right now. He's being played in solo mid only by Dendi so far as, or as far as I can recall. Um, then he does play nice bad rider overall, but then again, I do believe um, bad rider mid is not valid anymore. Really, it's just it's just too many nerves in mid lane. It's so hard to get into the game. Base damage being nerfed as well. Uh, I mean, that hero is just I basically an off lane support um, farming hero nowadays. Sort of like a prophet who's not going into the off lane at all. We're gonna see a nuke assassin being picked up here by Speed Gaming as the last pick. Very very interesting. Very interesting, to be quite honest. Um, is this gonna be an offlane nuke assassin? Maybe even dual lanes coming out of speed gaming. I mean, everything is possible now that the offlane actually meets closer to you, or the offlane creep wave meets to you, meets closer to your offlane tower. So that means that you're basically in a secure spot near your tower, and most of the time you can get into safety if you're gonna get ganked by the supports. Um, yeah, offlaning made easy by Ice Frog. So say thanks to him. Ten seconds remaining. Okay, we're just gonna wait until they pick up their heroes and we're gonna get into this seconds game. By the way, this is a replay cast, so um, this means that I actually do um, not know, surprisingly, who's gonna win this game. I I, I, I hope that Mouseport's gonna win this game because Bristleback, I mean, come on, seriously, that, that must be a first-timer and that must be a good first-timer, but um, yeah, we will see, we will see. Anyhow, Unicorn Xoxo is going to be playing the Bristol back on Mouseport. She's standing in for Ace, I do believe. Crit is going to be playing the Kunkka. That means maybe this is a support Kunkka? Not quite sure what's going to go on. They're going to head towards bottom. We do see Cinderin being on the Venomancer. Maybe a Venomancer mid? What is going on in this game? I'm not quite sure. Rai is going to be playing the Crystal Maiden. And overall, we do see Link Link playing the Nature's Prophet, finishing up the lineup of Mouseports. Maybe a... Maybe even a safe lane profit if there's gonna be an aggressive tri lane and if anyone goes mid, oh, it's gonna be very interesting. Bones Heaven looks like he's, I mean, he's the off laner of Speed Gaming, so he might be playing Nuke's Assassin as a solo bottom. Um, Howie 2000 is gonna try to rotate towards top lane on the Visage. We're gonna see Sing Sing on the uh, Shadow Fiend heading towards mid lane. Nothing special there. Sing Sing, I'm really interested to see um, how much he can do. Maybe he's going for Dagger or not. Maybe just a standard BKB. I do believe BKB is the right choice here because of Venomancer in mid lane. It's going to increase his levels by quite a bit. Um, Pile Die is going to be playing the Dazzle. And last but not least, who did I forget? I probably forgot Eternal Envy on the Weaver top lane. This looks like this looks like a tri lane by Speed Gaming. They're going to be blocking this lane and just a bit more um, to. Um, I do believe they're suspecting a tri lane on top lane. That would explain what they're doing right now. He's trying to block because he's suspecting that the tri lane on top lane is going to block as well. And since you know that, you know, normally your off lane is going to be meeting somewhere around here. Actually, more like around here. Uh, that means that if you block, you're going to get it closer to your tower, which is an advantage against the tri lane. But in this case, there's an just profit here. So um, we will see if he's just going to go ahead. Straight into woods, maybe, possibly. Well, anyway, we're gonna focus on mid lane right now. I do believe, or is bottom gonna get killed? I'm not quite sure. They're gonna go on Bone 7. Bone 7 has his carapace done once. Rise is hitting a lot of damage, but he's able to aggro it away. And we're seeing a chase on Bone 7. And what is going on? He's gonna drop, and there's only one slow and a lot of DPS being dealt by Quill Spray. What the crap is going on, seriously? Cinderin in mid lane is facing a dual lane right now, so um, that's something that Pilot does a lot of games currently with a Dazzle as well. Whenever he feels like mid lane is going to be hard for Sing Sing, he just rotates and then gives the mid laner nothing, and then that mid laner is completely out of game. And Sinner actually felt this already in one of the past games because I think three days ago he played against uh, Sing Sing in mid as well. It was Mouseports against Speed Gaming in the Natalik Pro 
League, uh, I do believe it's season four. And actually, something surprising happened there. They took out Cinderin completely. He was playing Night Stalker, and Sing Sing was playing Invoker. And what they did was basically just rotate Dazzle in, and Dazzle was standing on the choke and um, did nothing else but wait and harass Night Stalker out of the lane. Night Stalker didn't get anything, and they lost that game. Um, in a really, really ugly fashion. It was a really easy game for Speed Gaming. However, Mouseports won that series 2-1, to one, um, showing what they're made of. Defeating Speed Gaming, definitely definitely the top tier teams currently in the West, is quite something as a newer team. Uh, Mouseports has been playing, I, I guess, in their lineup for one and a half month now. Maybe close to two, but more like one and a half. And um, they're looking okay. They're going to make a go on Bone 7 right now. Going to rotate in here. Is there going to be a support by Mouse? Ah, oh, Ling Ling is going to be here as well. My god, Prophet rotating as well. And this might even... Yep, this seems it's going to be a push right here. Rice is going to pull and possibly even... Yep, he's going to pull the neutral creeps. And that means that these creeps are not going to come to bottom lane. No defense possible for now on this bottom tower. And we'll see if Mouseport is going to be able to take this tower or not. Let's check on Cinderin in mid lane. Cinderin has only gotten 6 last um, hits while Shadowfiend has gotten 16. So Sh Shadowfiend is already in the game right now. He has 12 souls stored. He has a lot of damage. And basically that means that uh, his main problem in the laning has been fixed with that rotation of Pilotai. Pilotai now is going to be looking to make a rotation into bottom lane, but he's going to be too late to defend this tower, even though Bone7 is here, nothing's going to happen here. They're going to secure the last hit, Bristleback gets it. That is delicious for Bristleback, a lot of farm coming in to this lane right now. Top lane, however, is going to be pushed a little bit by Aoi2000 on the Visage and Eternal Envy on his Weaver, and he has already one level in Gemini Detect, so that means he's going to hit hard as well. We do see it. Interesting fortification, popped a bit too early in my opinion because the creep wave just drew aggro and therefore not a lot of damage dropping on the tower anyway, so that was a little bit of a misplay right there. Uh, Sing Sing is gonna be actually damaged over time by Cinder and Cinder eating a lot of damage however. He went for an interesting build right now, one of each, that is that is okay so far, but normally if you play him on a try lane, the big question that remains after patch is, are you going to get a second um, level in as a Nexus has going down on bottom lane? LOE apparently rotated into bottom lane, but it's not going to be able to do anything right here. We do see almost a quad lane coming out of Mouseports. What I was about to say is, as a support right now, Venomous Gale doesn't do the damage over time right now anymore. So the big question is, are you going to um, skill the, the second level of Gale? or not on the try lane uh, or are you just gonna use them with your slow and just completely neglect the damage over time part um, of the hero very interesting still that um, Venomancer is mid and I wonder what would happen against a Shadow Fiend in a, on a heads on one, one versus one fight um, is under attack. If, you, if you do good in the first two waves against Shadow Fiend, Shadow Fiend you are more or less in control of the lane for another two to three minutes however at, at some point sooner or later that Shadow Fiend is just gonna be crazy and we do see an engagement on bottom lane Torrent is gonna hit Rise is eating a lot of damage by Soul Assumption here comes the Prophet as well are they gonna actually bring somebody on oh, Crit eats a lot of damage here by the tower hits is he gonna die no he's not gonna die however we did see Nuke's Assassin going down to a last hit off Bristleback and Bristleback has skilled two levels into his cool trade. He's gonna... Oh, they're gonna hit this, the poison, the slow off pilot eye. Are they gonna be able to chase him down? Nope, are not. Stout shield and threats, as well as the passive Bristleback, reducing so much damage right now. And we do see actually poison touch level 2 coming out of Dazzle right now. Not even one single level in Grave right now. So I guess um, Speed Gaming is saying, well, we're not focused on fighting too much. The heal must be enough. We're gonna try to gank more than be ganked. And therefore, and we're gonna use the poison touch to open up and uh, to use the slow. Uh, the, the, the slow got re oh, Rise is farming aggressively. He's gonna get killed by a neutral. Was that on purpose? Did he? Nope, he did not buy. So that was definitely a misplay as well. <laughs> that should not happen. He, uh, I, I believe, I, I'm not quite sure what I saw there. Uh, I do believe that he frostbited the <laughs> Wildkin. I hope he did. And then it's just the buff didn't, or I guess um, the frostbite wasn't enough. The duration, the full duration of it, to kill the Wildkin because he didn't stack any lasts in and then. Apparently he just died by <laughs> packing off. My god, normally Crystal Main is one of those nice heroes that you can just use so easily to farm up. Frostbite just completely stuns your creeps for quite a while. Unicorn Sucs is gonna... Wow, really aggressive by turn. I mean, that's what he likes to do right there. He just goes in with a really uh, aggressive Sukuchi and just times it out to not lose any health. However, in this case, you can see that Bristleback is gonna do a lot of damage and immediate reaction by Eternal Envy. He picks up the... Um, 
the magic stick to prevent or to get charges and to heal up use that burst heal to uh, survive any extreme damage or yeah i guess any extreme damage coming in um by some attacks of bristleback really nice items in this case um you need that that magic stick for sure but if you yeah, look at pilot eye he's really poor as well does is ardos his boots yep his boots are coming in that's why he doesn't have to pick why he hasn't picked up a magic stick so far bone seven is going to Wow, he got hit by Poison Nova, I do believe it's on cooldown. It's not going to be enough for Bone 7, however. And it looks like uh, Cinerin took some damage by himself. So not being able to get a kill on that bottom lane. However, I do believe that it's it's fine. I mean, add a lot of pressure there. And um, for now, you see Bone 7 retreating into, retreating into base. M Mouse is playing really aggressive here. They are smoked up. They're going to drop a very aggressive ward right there. While we see Bristleback fighting heads on Eternal Enemy. Eternal Enemy has to go back. He doesn't have a timeless anymore. I do believe they can rotate into this and they can just take it. Are they going to go in? Yep, they're going to go in right now. Nope. Where are they? There are they. And Frostbite is going to hit. No Sukuchi right there. Also, Prophets. Um... Oh, there's the grave by Pilot Die. He just skilled it up, and that means Mouse Ling Ling might be in some huge trouble right here. Prophet is bound to go down, but there is Cinder and Cinder opens up with the Gale. Two man Gale gonna hit for sure. And Bone Seven's gonna eat a lot of damage. Ling Ling's still not dead. He's gonna tangle up. Yes, he's gonna die. Finally, Unicorn Sox is gonna bring one down. It's gonna get hit by the tower. It's gonna be killed as well. So that's a one for two trade right now. Is Crit in some trouble as well? That's a big question. He has Arcane Boots up. Um, it looks like that's gonna be the end of it. Or is it? Nope. Maybe? Cinderin just doing some damage right here with the haste rune so far. Uh, Sing Sing himself is going for a BKB with the Venomance in mid. That's definitely the right choice right now against the AOE damage as well. Um, it, that's that's the that's the priority right now for SF to get his BKB up. And until then, he can basically not fight in those team fights. And I do believe it's going to be uh, speed gaming trying to take single outtakes, like for example in this case with some nice TP reactions. And other than that, just farm up. Wait till the BKB is up on the nevermore and at that point they're going to be able to fight really really fast eternal enemy is going to shift onto bottom and he's sitting at 52 last a lot of lasts for him and generally we see right now that um shadow fiend and eternal enemy are leading the board um creep creep kill wise and i do believe that's going to reflect on the graph as i'm saying that it, it does reflect for sure i mean you have to keep in mind that there's already one tower gone um for speed gaming your bottom tower has been taken and top tower actually has been denied huge that they were able to deny that tower i do believe familiars were trying to snipe that one off but not enough damage to actually get that kill and we do see that speed gaming yeah they're getting a lot of more uh, gold right now with the tower kill but it's not as much as they could have gotten um so actually it's it's pretty pretty much um it's in that in the direction of uh, speed gaming right now. They're they're getting some nice gold. Oh, one man gale, one man one man gale not gonna be enough. Soul Temple is gonna be dished out because of the damage being dealt dealt, dealt before. And a nice reaction by Howie two thousand. He's gonna go back and just finish rege regenerate some health up. My God, my English is kind of spitty actually right now. Interesting, very interesting. DC uh, this is the question right here. Not quite sure what's going on. I do believe in these games there are no pauses. Yeah, no pauses, I think, right? Yeah, it should be. I hope there are no pauses in... Are there pauses in replays? I have not watched a lot of replays for ages. Too much life um, watching and casting, I do believe. But whatever. Anyways, Sinrin here has the Invis rune. He's waiting for some support, for some rotation. And I do believe with a two-man Gale and the opening. Nice opening with the ultimate as well. Is it going to be enough damage here with the... Sinner eating a lot of damage with the race. Sing Sing is going to finish it up. Rise is going to go in with the frostbite. Almost drops down to the Requiem of Souls. However, there's a lot of damage by the poison. Um, and Grave is going to be popped on Shadow Fiend. That means that Pilot Eye, however, is going to die for sure here. He's going to drop to Kunkka. And big question is, is Shadow Fiend going to get out? It looks like he's going to be just fine. It's going to be tipping out in the Roshan pit right here. And uh, that means Crit gets a kill on Dazzle. Again, a Kunkka. It's Kunkka support with Arcane Boots. Man, very interesting. Ling Ling might be picked up by Bone 7. Is he going to go in? Nope, he's not going to go in. He's a little bit too scared. I do believe that was the right choice right there because Kunka was right there and he could have reacted. And um, feeding away... I were, Well, let's put it this way. Killing uh, Bone 7, uh, killing an Prophet is fine. 
uh, in a trade with an assassin but then again you give some unnecessary feed to a support and in this case actually this is a support that is going to scale well into late game um, definitely one of those heroes that you can say as a support uh, if he get if he gets his levels up he's going to be having a really nice time um, hitting some nice uh, torrents dealing some AoE damage with his type bringer which he's going to get at some point however so far he has gone for Xbox support level 2 and torrent after that and the reason why you only go 2 levels I don't believe he's going to take more levels than X marks the spot and I don't think he needs to it's 2 seconds on the X mark and uh, it's 1. seconds on the torrent so that means that basically what you do is you just open with the X marker spot and uh, 0.5 seconds after that you just uh, follow up with the torrent and therefore it's a safe torrent hit um, nice setup obviously as well by the frostbite well I hear a lot of damage right here being dealt on the crystal main she's gonna drop two a soul assumption right there Visage, Visage is uh, sitting at 1200 gold right now having a fully upgraded stick right there as well as Pilei, and they all have the sticks. That's definitely what they need against the Bristol back. Even a stick on the Shadow Fiend. Bone Seven is going to try to rotate somewhere in. He has a stick as well. So best item early game actually being picked up right here by almost every single hero. We can do a quick item check right now. I do believe very aggressive wards here by um, Speed Gaming. By the way, and generally just a lot of wards right here. What's going on? Radiance Top Tower is under completely. Attack. Having, they're just having a nice map presence um, with those wards because they see every single rotation into top lane, into the woods of uh, the dire side. Very, very nice. Uh, Bone Seven's gonna rotate in here, so no item check right now. There's an a sentry ward right here. Bone Seven doesn't have an ultimate anyway, so he's gonna go down. Probably Turn's gonna hit. He has, have he had his uh, carapace out, so that means that I guess he's dealing some extra damage. However, nothing, nothing's gonna be returned by Pi. Pi is gonna be able to TP out. Is AOE gonna be? Able Nope, not enough. There's a torrent, there's a frostbite as well, so he's gonna get bursted down. Two heroes dropping there on the top lane, and it looks like mouseports are gathering up to push another tower, and that means a lot of gold flow get going towards um, mouseports' inventory. And uh, once you get the advantage and you keep rolling, it's really hard to come back nowadays in this patch. I do believe, however, that we do have a nice synergy here with the uh, Shadow Fiend and the Weave. The question is, when is it gonna come? We haven't seen Sing Sing in any real fight so far. He has picked up one kill. I'm not quite sure when, to be honest. Oh yeah, actually that was the, the race uh, um, smashing on the, the Cinder and Venomancer. Yeah, I do believe. Cinder is going to be dived and by Turlemi, but he's going to be fine. No problem there. He's just doing whatever he does. Uh, in using his time lapse. It's only 60 seconds. And I mean, if you use, if you're full mana and you go in with your Sukuchi and you chase and then you time it out, you don't lose anything really. So it's nice to use it every. It's basically, it's basically like. Okay, I have no an analogy right now. That's actually. That's actually bad. I was about to say, it's basically like a... <laughs> but that doesn't fit really well. It's basically like a black hole um, of Enigma um, being used whenever it's off cooldown. Basically, it, <laughs> I mean, um, <laughs> except it's a higher cooldown and everything. But what I'm trying to say is, use it ultimate whenever it's off CD. Um, as long as you know there's not, not a fight coming in, a five-man fight. Um, same with Nigma Ultimate. I like people that actually use their black hole in the first 15 minutes whenever it's off cooldown. Just using it on one man. Doesn't matter. Use it. Kill. And uh, be happy that it worked out. End of story. Kill is kill right here. Chris is going to see that uh, Shadow Fiend is going to be picking up that regeneration rune. And I'm, I, I really... I do think that Sing Sing can start fight fights now he is 136 CS I mean net worth wise he must be ahead by so much 2000 ahead of Bristleback Bristleback seeing a lot of farm as well Torrent is gonna hit a sooner and even gonna hit a gale on him as well a lot of harass on Sing 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 is gonna eat quite some damage has he skilled up gale level yep gale level 3 so far he's sitting at level 9 shadow fiend in mid lane le uh, level 11 that means sooner is lacking a lot of experience but after um, losing mid lane by having pile rotate in to harass him out of lane it's basically it's given that you're gonna be a, be a behind by quite a lot um, experience wise. Unicorn is also sitting at 73 lasses opting for a Vanguard that has been buffed to 80% uh, block chance so not a, not a too bad item to be quite honest I mean 80% is quite a lot blocking um, for sure 40 damage or 20 damage depending on what type of attacker you are range or melee it's 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 actually I do believe it's undervalued now after this patch. Um, before I was saying that, well, if you if you get a um, stout shield and upgrade into a Pullman shield and get drums, you basically have the same as a Vanguard, the same sort of buff, uh, more stats, more life. It's cheaper, but 
On the other hand, Vanguard, in this case here, you're gonna eat a lot of right clicks from Speed Gaming, so I believe this is the right choice, or a good choice as an item. You're gonna block for sure. You have the regeneration, which is actually a really nice thing for a Bristleback as well. 12.3 um, per second, that is a lot, while I'm actually missing a kill in top lane. Must have been a smoke gang with the Nyx Assassin Vendetta, killing off the Nature's Prophet in top lane. What is Ling Ling sitting at currently? He has Midas, Face Boots, and... Uh, 3,000 gold in this inventory. We'll see if this is going to be a Necromonicum Prophet, which has been getting back into the meta ever since the Shadow, Bling, Shadow, um, Shadow Blade has been... Um Oh, Sing Sing's gonna rotate back in. He does know that there's a mechanism, apparently. He goes in trying to kill people, but he's not gonna be able to. Tyler's gonna hit. They're gonna back out right now. Mosport's activating a drum charge to flee, to run. Crit is gonna hit a nice torrent right there. Bone 7, however, with the Blink Dagger. Is he gonna get into the range to actually stun Impale Crit? No, he's not. They're gonna blow off the chase right now. And I do believe that was a really nice torrent. He's saving their butts, especially with the drum charge. That was not a bad drum charge. Um, Jump charge as well. Normally you want to activate them in the fight because it gives you extra attack speed and movement speed and deals so much more damage. But, you know, whatever. Whatever fills your boat. If you use it defensively, uh, it works. It's like a Naga song. You can use it defensively, but it's better if aggressively, obviously. Okay, anyway, well, how are we sitting here? Crit is sitting Arcane Boots, Urn of Shadows, so I do believe Blink Dagger is going to be up soon next. Um, just for a nice initiation, for a nice Ghost Staff, for a nice x mark spot, catching people that are off or out of position, I suppose. Um, Eternal Envy having some nice farm as well. This thing is 7,400 net worth right now. 3,000 gold in his inventory. He's gonna go for Lincoln Sphere. It looks like it. He has a ring of health already in his inventory. Crit knows that he... Oh, what? Horrible, horrible... Um, carrot Swarm right there. Wow. Anyway. Unicorn Soak, so getting that Aegis, so he's even tankier now. He has a nice portion of health regeneration, he has nice stats, he has a nice damage block, he has threats. He's sitting at 1500 um, life points, and it's not gonna get less with um, increasing game level wise. Obviously, a lot of strength game coming in for the Bristol bag, and in addition to that, we do have some more items to be finished up on him. I would like to see a Song in Yasha right now on Unicorn Soak, so just getting that Sun Slow Mame up. And um, especially with the movement speed bonus and the actually attack speed bonus, and some nice stats coming in by the. Um, oh wow, he's going it! What is going on? As I'm missing a kill in mid lane for being surprised there. Cinder and dropping to a gank here in mid lane, hitting out his ultimate and apparently hitting a Gale as well. Just a poison sting. It looks like Bone Seven is going to drop really low. You can see already how much damage it is. My God, Sing Sing even <laughs> going to be used. <laughs> Grave's going to be used on him just because, um, for the sake of. I guess for security reasons. For security, why not? Sure. Uh, oh wow, it really looks like it's, he's going Sangon Yasha. Interesting, interesting. Um, definitely a good item on him. I really like that fact he's going for movement speed, for tank ability, for some stats, for some nice attack speed as well. Overall, with the slow, it's such a nice item, such a nice synergy on um, the Bristol back. And I like that Unicorn Kong is playing the stand in Bristol back right now. And generally, um, or in general, uh, Unicorn Soxo is standing in quite frequently for mall sports for Ace, and because Ace is in school and he has school school trips to Spain and such, and apparently that was one reason why he wasn't here as well. I, I think, I think, I hope. I, I I read something about him being on a Spanish school. Well, whatever, in Spain, wherever he is, he's being. Um, I think the substitute is a good substitute. For sure, he's doing a nice job right now. Sitting at 100 lasses right now, 4, 1, and 3. Let's see what else we do have item-wise. We have a Venomancer with a mechanism. Um, we have seen that being popped already a few times in the fights. Um, nice item for him. Is he going for... Nah, not a PKB. I mean, Venomancer is one and wonder. All you do is you, you do whatever you do and and that's it. Oh, I think I think Venom... Hmm. Might even go for an Aghanim, just hit that ultimate, and then when you die, you die, it doesn't really matter. In this case, we do see a nice sprout coming out of um, out of a Link, and Ternami has to blow a BKB charge defensively to get out the Frostbite right there and not die. Pile die is sitting at the medallion. Let's just, let's just, let's just, let's just see if we have the time to do anything right here. Is this going to be a push on bottom lane? Wow, surprise push more or less on bottom lane. Link Link has not gone, 
has gone for Shadow Blade actually, so he's gonna be able to move out really fast if he chooses to. Sing Sing is gonna go in right now. Does he have to drop the BKB? He drops the BKB defensively. He wants to go get out. Is he gonna get out? That's a big question. We've already got spelled on the opposing team. Unicorn's is eating a lot of damage. Actually, um, huge ship coming in. Coconut on the room is on Unicorn Soak, so we're gonna see Eternal Emmy drop low. Is he gonna is he gonna die? It's a big question. It seems like he's not gonna die. No, yes, he's gonna die. Vendormancer with his ultimate, with his nice Gale and nice um, right click poison sting. Getting the kill right there on Eternal Envy. No Grave helping him um, to survive that because Grave has obviously only a short duration on you. Um, that was that was quite a disastrous fight um, for Speed Gaming. I mean, opening with the BKB defensively, um, Sing Sing here. That was definitely not a misplay, but I mean, that was definitely one of those factors. Two man impale after a dagger hitting on Yunus Soso and crit. Are they going to return it? They're going to return it. The turn is going to hit as well. This is a dead Nukes Assassin. Paladite dropping really low as well. They're going to chase this. And I think they can. And I think they can actually even exert a lot of pressure on this tower. This this seems like Lost Sports is suddenly on control of the game. They lost the first game. But this game looks like it's the op exact opposite of the first game. Ling Ling eating a lot of dam damage is going to go down to his soul assumption. Um, even though the ship was on its way to help. Rice eating a lot of damage. Are they gonna counter go turn enemy? Turn enemy might be overextending here. He's gonna kill Rice, however, he's gonna drop the BKB and Crit is eating a lot of damage now. There's the time lapse. Crit might be going down. He's gonna go down. Is there gonna be a TP out by turn enemy? Are they gonna be able to Nope. Zunarin getting out with a nice um teleport and So that means om almost almost um having so much pressure and so much force to take down the Rex. It was enough to take down the tower, but after that. I guess it was a slight overextension because, uh, I mean, Venomancer already blew his Gale and after a uh, Gale and uh, Poison Nova com combination, and after he blows that combination, uh, you might want to go back because that's your mid hero who has some levels. Uh, he's sitting at level two, 12 actually. That's not a lot. <laughs> level 15 on Sing Sing, but still, I mean, it's it's what you're counting on as a mid hero. You want that utility. You want that impact on the game. And once you blow your spells. Um, it basically means you might need to go back in, in such cases. We do see the Sang and Yasha completed on the Bristleback. Um, he still has 1,400 in his, go in his uh, bank account right now. Cinerium himself still opting for whatever he opts for. I hope it's not the BKB. I hope it's the Argonim Scepter because, as I was just saying, impact on the game right now for that mid here is going to be increased by the Argonim Scepter. However, we do have... Um, I mean, yeah, we only have two BKB heroes right now on the side of speed gaming and I do believe that might be a problem in late game as well I mean the ultimate is only gonna last or I mean the BKB is only gonna last for five seconds right now, or at some point right now it's already at eight seconds um, in the case of eternal enemy and at some point you're gonna be facing the problem that basically um, Sinurin is just gonna wait for you to pop those BKBs they're gonna bait them out and as soon as he sees that he's gonna wait five six more seconds and then maybe even get a blink dagger blink dagger in an ultimate Hit out the Gale, um, Poison Sting. The Wards do Poison Sting as well now with the new um, change. So, overall, that's going to be a lot of damage. Especially, I mean, they can Siege at some point so easily. Th those Wards are going to be so annoying um, with that Poison Sting on them. Um, being level 4, I mean, seriously, that's just scary. Shadow Fiend actually finding a kill on Kunkai here. He's being a little bit out of position. That means that the whole team of Mousebird has to get out and wow, I just saw that <laughs> Rise almost dropped as well. Sorry for my bad camera movement right there. Um, not, I'm gonna focus a little bit more on those kills. I think I missed three or four kills already in this game. Not too good, but yeah, happens. Anyway, 2000 gold on Unicorn Soak. So we have Cinderin, um still trying to gather up whatever he's going for. Rise is sitting at his Tranquil Boots and Urn of Shadows. It means we have two Urn of Shadows. I'm not quite sure I agree with that um, because those charges are going to be split. And uh, I do believe it's a little bit too much stacking right there. I wish Rise would have gone for maybe a 4 staff. Just getting some extra mobility against the Weaver. Um, kite ability, maybe even a Ghost Scepter or a Yield Scepter, which is already a little bit too uh, expensive, I do believe. Um, Kunga has the force left though, so that's that's quite nice. And we do see Prophet having having a nice go at his sheep stick right now. It's going to be up in the, uh, one or two minutes, basically, uh, farming up for it. Two thousand eight hundred in his bank account. And late mail just flew into Bristolback, going for the AC most likely. Some nice tank. Tank, tanking is coming out of him, um, opting against the presence of the Dark Lord aura. I like that item a lot if he's going to pick it up. I mean, the option, other option would be Shivas, but I don't think he really needs a Shivas right now. He don't, doesn't need to go against the attack speed. I believe AC is going to do more, especially against the presence of the Dark Lord. Aura of 6. 
Well, and I mean the weave as, as as well. Don't forget about the freaking weave. That's just insane. Okay, still only a medallion for Dazzle right now. As might be seeing a kill on bottom lane. Bones have sitting on the dagger and arcane boots. So, um, nice items for him. The question is, what is he going to go for now? Uh, I I I I think it might be even a halberd game right here. No, no halberd game actually. What is this game? This game four staff. I think they got four staff maybe. I'm not quite sure. Sing Sing. Let's see what item he has chosen to go for. Daedalus. So he upgraded his crit, finished it. A lot of damage coming out of uh, Shadow Fiend. Hitting for almost 300 damage is actually quite a substantial amount. Um, Visage. Does, does Visage have her Arganims? Yep. Arganims. Straight Arganims. Nothing else. They don't have. They don't have a mechan mechanism. Okay. They believe that Dazzle is enough. They don't need a mechan mechanism because they can heal them up. Kluxo is a little bit in. A little bit far right here, but he's gonna head back and he's gonna be absolutely fine. Uh, Eternal Envy seems to be porting back to base, sitting at 2,900 gold here. Ring of Health. Didn't, didn't I see a Ring of Health on him? I saw a Ring of Health on him. Did he sell it? I think he sold his Ring of Health, opting for the BKB. I do still believe that. Actually, I'm not quite sure. BKB blocking a lot of damage. Well, actually, I'm not gonna doubt that. That decision right there, I do believe it's not a bad decision. Roshan sort of got attacked here. He's also doing a lot of damage um, with his cold spray, and uh, he has. I guess maybe Shivas would be nice for the mana mana pool issues, but then again, I I mean, as long as he doesn't waste his mana before he goes goes into his fight, he has a lot, a lot, a lot of room to um, just hit out a lot of goos and a lot of cold sprays. I mean, look at that. He's sitting at, at 65. I mean, 65 mana for both skills. And he's sitting at a pool of seven, 800 almost nearly. Should be fine. Depends on how long the fight drags out. But there are also Arcane Boots. And we do see that they're trying to build up a siege right here. Um, a lot of wards being dropped by Cinder. Look at this. <laughs> if you, that's a lot of damage. Look at the Poison poison Sting. Hour. They hit one ward. They killed the second ward. But they're they're getting so much damage. They're going to be even hit by a torrent. Where is popping out of nowhere because of that nice modifier item uh, that Kunkka has. Uh, the... the Immortal item of the international. Sinurin just picked up his Agonims. So it's gonna be Agonims. He's gonna be that one hit wonder um, hero. Ghost Scepter on Rise. Nice item there. We're gonna see. Somebody being catch out. Oh, sorry for that. Uh, we see a torrent with the X Marker spot followed up by a huge freaking ship. And I do believe, even though. Yeah, nothing, even though. I mean. There's nothing that uh, Speed Gaming can do without the Dazzle. Dazzle, uh, his weave is an, es is an essential ultimate right now to actually hit, uh, to go into the Roshan Pit and fight this, but I can. Sheep is up on Link Link. I do believe Mousepot is uh, quite content with their item builds right now. They're having almost everything they could possibly want. Uh, Bristleback, you know, once he has his AC, it's going to be really, really tough for Speed Gaming. Bone 7, not quite sure what he's going to be picking up. He's not having too much farm currently, not too much item progression. We do see a Death Lighter coming out of Eternal Envy, just maximizing that um, damage and going with that Gemini attack, maximizing the all, uh, the damage I'll put on that one target as well with the Desolator. Minus 6 R, just, just working a lot with the Aura. I'm not quite sure if this is almost an overkill, Aura-wise, because there's so much negative Aura, and at some point, I think it's a minus 20 Aura, it just doesn't do anything for you anymore. If your opposing team has 20 min minus 20 armor, uh, however, right, I guess that's quite a bit to achieve right now. We do see that uh, if he's in the presence of the Dark Lord, we see only 14 armor on Tokso. So is there going to be the weave soon by Pilota? He has used it apparently on whom I don't know. A lot of damage being dished out right here. Uh, Sing Sing is not going to go in. We do see Tokso eating a lot of damage. He needs to pop his BKB at some point. He's still not going to pop it. He should pop it now. Now he's going to pop it. He's going to hit right click even Tokso. No, he has the Aegis. That's why they're not going to uh, destroy him early. Um, ultimate of Venomance is gonna hit, but not everybody. There were BKBs out, and um, Venomance is just dying right there, being that one hit wonder. Um, interesting, interesting, interesting. Still seems like Mousebird just has too much damage right here to um, to let Speed Gaming do anything about this right now. Um, Glyph Fortification is gonna go out. Impale misses after the dagger. That shouldn't happen. But then again, I'm not quite sure if this actually matters. Veneta is going to hit out on Xoxo. Immediate sheep stick by Link Link. Strong play by him. Fast reaction on Bone 7. No carapace by him. No nothing. And um, Aoi rotates and has a lot of soul assumptions right there. It's going to use another one on Link Link. Link Link eating a lot of damage. But still, nothing actually happens here. Crit went down 
a while ago as well as Venomancer. Um, so overall, Mouseports again taking a nice fight for them, and we do see that the graph, especially of gold, actually is just in favor of Mouseports a lot. And this this is really almost a, a pushing strat. Um, Experience-wise, we do see that Speed Gaming is far ahead overall. It's just starting to dip down because Mouseports are winning a few fights, but. Um, I do have to say that, that they're playing convincing right now, almost, but they're taking a lot of towers. Only mid tower remaining. Tier 2 mid tower is remaining. Uh, yeah. Tier 2 mid tower is remaining. Um, that's, that's it, basically, right now. And uh, Mouseports still are hanging on to all their tier 2 towers. Uh, so that means they're, they're in a comfortable position to uh, actually fight this Roshan, fight the next one as well, simply because, or only because, they're, they have that bottom dire tower. Nice TP spot to get fast to the Roshan pit. Let's see. Um, Sinner is gonna be farming up here with his wards. I do believe the prioritized farm right here is still Sinner. The question for me is, what is he gonna go now? I guess the Blink Dagger is, is what he should go next for. I mean, nice initiation, hitting that ultimate for sure. Staying way, way back, waiting till the um, BKB is gonna be popped by Sing Sing and by Eternal Envy. That's, I guess, some choice you can make. However, oh, this Shadow Fiend, I mean, once he's able to right click, it's gonna be a hard fight for Mouseports. There's so much damage coming out of Sing Sing right here. He even has a Satanic to regenerate up. I like this item choice just to um, go against all that damage over time, against all that splash damage, just hitting two or three times with the Satanic activated with the damage already is gonna bring him close to full life. Or let's just say half life if he's dropping low. Um, very, very nice. Indeed, Pilot is still not getting any more items. We do see an Impale after Dagger is gonna miss. Crit not gonna get hit right here. It's gonna be tipping out. And that's it. That's what you're gonna do with the smoke. Well, and Proud is doing his thing. He's gonna push top lane. Opted for Necromonicum level 3 right here. And I do believe this is a, a nice item choice. Just completely finishing off that overall pushing lineup from Mouseports with the Prophet, with the Venomancer. And I guess, even though this doesn't look like a pushing lineup per se, it is actually a pushing lineup right now. It's being played as a pushing lineup. They're just using every single small fight they can win to push towers and now they are already ahead so far that the plague wards, plague wards are going to do so much damage with the poison sting they're going to be able to siege to such an easy degree and uh, Unicum is also actually finishing up his assault cures already crit himself still a force death not a dagger I guess that's 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 a better item choice than a dagger because there's so much um, Overall, there's just so much stuff that could disable your dagger, and Force Death works defensively as well. So, very nice item choice by him. Rai still actually picking up a gem right here against the Weaver. Sinarin, nothing more coming out in, um, by him. Eternal Envy himself has a Desolator, nothing new. Still sitting at a Bracer right there. Bone 7, nope. So that's that's it. We don't have any real item progression right now. The only one who has picked up some huge item is Sing. And other than that, Aoi 2000 hasn't been picking up anything as well. Is he going for mech? Yeah, he's going for the mechanism apparently after he upgraded his familiars. Very interesting choice as well. I do believe. I do believe that general, generally speaking, mechanism after 30 minutes. Um, loses a lot of his uh, potential. I mean, that burst damage, it's not gonna matter that much anymore in late game. It, you know, with increasing life points, that small burst damage, uh, burst heal of um, of those uh, 250, it's just not gonna matter too much in my opinion. But, I mean, I guess you can. Sure, why not? Why not? Just get a mechanism to get some burst heal out. But then again, I yeah, I still agree. I, I don't think you should be going for that right now. I would much rather enjoy four staffs, ghost scepters. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Maybe an AC. Yeah, I prefer that as well. Not going for mechanism, so never mind that. Chainmail and plate mail. That is the definite AC right there. Gonna um, get that item up because they, they definitely need to. I mean, you, once the AC is up on the opponent uh, team, you need to get the counter AC just to um, nullify the whole effect right there. Um, overall, net worth wise, we still see that. Um, the Shadow Fiend has a nice farm, for sure. He's actually getting a decent amount of farm as well. But what we see right now is that the offlaner war is being won by Prophet against Bone 7. And I guess that's that's a big problem because if there is no third core hero right here for um, for Speed Gaming. They have sort of a utility, Nukes Assassin. Who, yeah, I mean, it's nice to have for sure. And if he gets some momentum in early game, definitely crazy, crazy, crazy hero. Um, but, as I said right now, um, or just now, 
it it feels like he's he's lacking he's lacking the presence he's lacking um he's lacking the the right amount of scale scale is there a noun to scale i mean to scale the scale whatever either case you get what i mean <laughs> oh man um yeah i believe it's two uh, two core heroes right now against still two actually three core heroes um, because Sindarin has his Aghanim Scepter and he has a mechanism and all he needs to do is to get level 16 and then just dish out his Poison Nova um, increase duration damage, it's just crazy general 60% uh, damage and that's 60% I, I, uh, duration and I believe that's without the Aghanims not quite sure what the Aghanims cooldown is, 40? 40, 45? whatever it is it's crazy, you basically cannot fight anymore, BKB is not going to do jack shit for you if you're an opposing team you just go in ultimate and even if you if you have to pop bkbs right there you just go in right again afterwards in the next fight and again and again and again at some point you're going to be able to bait out everything and just going to be fine no matter what and also another factor i do believe that matters is that bristleback is already so tanky i'm getting another item soon uh, i'm not quite sure if it should be a heart of tarask would make him a lot i mean tankier but Armored is maybe a nice DPS item here, increasing his tank ability as well. Armored toggle. Mm, nah, no armored. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe it's a it's a hard to rest game. Maybe even a halberd actually. Yeah, why not a halberd? Evasion, picking up evasion against the physical right clicks um, from Eternal Envy and Shadow Fiend. I actually like that. Maybe a halberd. We're just gonna opt for the Ghost Scepter now as well, so we already see that all the supports are just going for the standard builds right now. Picking up the Ghost Scepters against the physical damage of the core heroes of Speed Gaming, and that means that they're gonna get um, tankier and tankier. If they're gonna survive longer than the opposing, um, than the opposing supports, that already is a sign that this game is not going too well for Speed Gaming. Uh, however, we still have a lot of combinations coming out of Speed Gaming. If they pull up a nice, pull up a nice fight and have that Shadow Fiend. Um, right clicking away, I I think it's, it's still gonna be a hard hard fight. While we do see that Yungong Tsuxu is being catched out on bottom lane, immediate rotation by Sing, uh, by Link Link on the Prophet. Tsuxu tanking a lot, is he gonna be fine? It's a big question. Yes, we've dropped on him. Link Link is in some huge trouble, trouble as well, that can be brought down, I do believe, or is he? Nope, he's not. And that means that Tsuxu is gonna get out. We do see that Sinern just went in with an ultimate, is gonna try to hit hard, but is not hitting too hard. Bone 7 is gonna TP back into his base. Sinern with his Ghost Scepter, yeah, he's gonna survive a few more seconds, but I don't know why he went in there. He shouldn't have, or he shouldn't didn't need to go in there, I do believe. Um since his poison nova is not fatal, Bone 7 is gonna survive as well. So that was a fight that Speed Gaming needed for sure. Maybe they can try to get to Roshan, which just respawned a few seconds ago. Rai is gonna be able to port out. And uh, that was definitely a close, 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 close port. Um, mouse birds seem to be knowing what's going on. They're already trying to rotate into mid lane. However, only uh, Unicorn Tsuxu and the Kunkka are here. And there's a lot of damage coming out by this Eternal. Oh, huge bow is gonna hit! Bow is gonna hit that Eternal Envy. Eternal Envy just drops immediately against Unicorn Tsuxu's right clicks. Who has the Aegis? It's a big question. Aegis has been picked up by Shadow Fiend. They're still in. He's sitting on the speed. Uh, on the cheese, I mean, cheese is not being taken by anyone. Xoxo is not gonna. Yes, now Xoxo takes uh, the, the cheese. Is gonna be able to pop it right there. That means another kill is gonna go out. Sing Sing is gonna drop as well, dropping his dominating streak. And that means, I believe, speed uh, mouse birds are just gonna be very content to just go on bottom lane, push it, try to get the racks, and and and, and be happy if they can take him. Try to uh, take this game number two to head into game number three. Uh, however, we saw how crazy the damage is of Shadow Fiend and Eternal Envy. That Roche was melting so fast. But, I mean, if you s if you sit in the Roche and pit and you get hit by a ship, yeah, you're screwed. Nothing else to add. And that just meant that Mouseports was defending that Roche and pit with just a Kunkka and a Bristleback. <laughs> We're talking about Bristleback Venomancer lineup here, by the way. I mean, that is completely unorthodox. A Venomancer in mid lane and a Bristleback. <laughs> Farming up. I haven't seen that for a long while, but I sure as hell do like this. It's it's maybe some situational nice strategy right here. Pyla is going to be hit by the torrent and by the boat. We do see a nice impale dagger uh, by 
Binding's Assassin, you can also has his BKB picked up, I don't know when that flew in, but it's gonna help him a lot, he's gonna deal a lot of damage, and Weaver even drops really fast, look at that damage output by this Bristleback, he's sitting at 223, my god, that's almost 400 damage by Bristleback, just by spamming every single spell he has, crazy, crazy amount of damage, Sing Sing is still alive, Link Link, I think, I believe, is has been alive all the time, no, he just, did he buy back, that's a big question, no, he didn't buy back, so, yeah, he bought back, okay, never mind, so this is actually the, Buyback Prophet who's gonna go and destroy your open, opponent's space right there. Everybody from most sports has been living and has been having a good life so far. GG well played is being called out by Speed Gaming and Mouse Sports. Take game number two of this best of three series in the Dota 2 champion, Champions League or whatever you want to call it, hosted by Navi Gaming. Very convincing second game by Mouse Sports. Only 16 to 22, but still. Um, a lot of action, a lot of pushing coming out from Mouse Sports. Congrats to them for taking game number two and heading into game number three, which is gonna be obviously where we're gonna be heading as well. So do uh, look for that to come up. GG, well played. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this commentary.